this video, I will show you how you can make this awesome looking spectrum analyzer using which you can also display beautiful animation with the click of a button. It is based on WS2A20B addressable RGB LEDs which are my favorite. So without any further ado, let's get into it. First off, I got myself 2 meters of the WS2A20B strips, the 30 LEDs per meter version. We will be needing 49 LEDs, but you can also increase or decrease it according to your requirements. Just make sure they are in the multiple of 7. Then I connected the power and data pin to Arduino for testing. I edited the sketch for slide from Fast LED Library and uploaded it to Arduino and the LEDs light up white one after another, which means they are working fine. Then I collected the second most important component of this project, the MSG EQ7IC. I made this circuit on a breadboard and applied audio signal using a headphone wire. Use any one channel from left or right and come on the ground to Arduino ground. Then I uploaded this sketch which will light up 7 sets of 2 LEDs according to the audio signal you are providing as the IC divides the audio spectrum into 7 bands. The sketch also displays the output in serial monitor. So that's also something you can look for. Looking at the result, we can say that our setup is working fine. Now we will add an IR receiver so that we can switch the modes using an IR remote. I made a few adjustments according to the circuit diagram and uploaded this sketch. The sketch lights up two sets of seven LEDs for any two band of the audio spectrum, which you can edit in the sketch. And if you press the dedicated button on the IR remote, it will switch its mode to animation mode. You can use any IR remote. Just determine the hex codes and edit it in the sketch. To know how to do that, check description. Now that we know everything is working fine, we can move on to the next step. I got myself all the required components. I am using Arduino Uno so that I can easily upload new programs in the future if required. But you can also use Arduino Nano. I cut a narrow piece of perf board and I will be soldering the MSG Q7 and all the other components on this board itself. Actually, I will be making something like an Arduino shield using some male headers. So I planned the layout keeping in mind that something doesn't come in the way while fixing the shield to Arduino and then started soldering. Then I took a 3.5mm plug and soldered two wires, one to ground and one to any one of the channel and the other end of the wire goes to the MSG Q7 shield. After this was done, I placed the IC, soldered power wires and tested the shield using Arduino Uno using serial monitor like we did earlier. When I was sure everything is working fine, I moved on to the next step. Now I took a 3mm MDF and made a square of size 25.2cm and cut it using a hacksaw. Then I drew 49 squares, each of size 3.6cm on it. Then I started cutting the LED strips. I cut 7 pieces, each containing 7 LEDs as we will be making a matrix of 7x7 7 7, that is 49 LEDs. After cutting, I peeled off the tape at their back and stick it to the MDF piece we had cut earlier. I had to make holes at two places on the MDF using a drill so that the wires can pass through. Keep in mind that all the data direction arrows on the strip must follow the same direction, that is left to right. Then using a 2mm drill bit, I made three holes next to VCC ground and data pins on either end of each of the seven LED strips. I tinned the solder pads of the strips on both the ends. Then I started shorting the VCC and ground of all the strips. First, I shorted the first row to the consecutive row from the left side. Then I moved on to the right end of the second row and shorted the second row to the third row on the right side itself using a 0.75 square mm wire. Then again moved to the right of the third row and continued this process in the same alternating way until all power lines are connected together. Then I took two little longer 0.75 square mm wires and soldered it to the last row power solder pads which were left over. I will solder this to the first row power wires and then supply power to these two wires. This is called dual feeding and I am doing this because I don't really trust the power handling ability of the traces in the strips. With strips like these, there is a significant amount of voltage drop when voltage travels all the way to the end. So that's a good practice to do. And at last, don't forget to check for continuity. Now I will connect the data out from the first row to data in of second row, data out of second row to data in of third row and so on until the last row is reached. 
I will use a solid 0.5 square mm wire for this purpose. I measured and cut the wires and then inserted them in the holes I drilled for them and bent them so that they stay in place. Then I started soldering. Be sure not to short these wires to VCC or ground while soldering. On the fourth row, I soldered this wire to the green wire from the strip as this is connected to data in of the LED. After 15 minutes, soldering was complete. I tested my connection by utilizing the first light sketch from fast LED library like we did earlier. For partitioning, I will be using a 10mm thick white thermocol sheet so that the light from the LED gets reflected and looks brighter. I cut two squares of 2.4 cm and brought in the milky white acrylic sheet I will be using and kept it at the top. I arranged it around a glowing LED and checked if the size of the square allows complete diffusion of the light or not and it is looking good. But the acrylic sheet I am using is of 2 mm and looks like it is a little thin for the purpose as I can see the LED is glowing through it. To solve this, I will use a butter paper before putting the acrylic sheet. But you can also use a 3mm acrylic sheet which should do the job as well. Now let's build the enclosure. To make it, I will use a 12mm MDF. I made these dimensions on the MDF using a pen. I rotated the shoe of my jigsaw to 45 degrees for a bevel cut. This is my first time using a jigsaw as you can see. It deviated way far from the line I had drawn. Due to this, I had to redo all the dimensions again parallel to this crooked line. After redrawing the lines, I rotated the shoe again 45 degrees but this time the other way around. After this, I adjusted the shoe to 90 degrees and started cutting straight lines I had drawn. I used a straight and long wood piece and held it with a clamp for guiding. I have very little experience with woodworking, so suggestions are really appreciated. Anyways, at the end, it all worked out and I had 4 pieces which I can join together to make an enclosure for our project. I took a small wood nail and started hammering them on each of the corners. I hammered only one nail which held the pieces strongly enough at their places. I also left one corner open so that if there is some error I can fix it. Then using a very thin material like this box cutter, I applied wood glue to each of the hammered corners. I applied enough glue so that each space is completely filled while simultaneously checking for any air bubbles. After this, I let it dry overnight. Then I started adding hot glue to the back of the MDF in which we have fixed our LEDs. I applied it to the wires and solder joints for added protection. The glue is now dried and I brought the MDF with LEDs to check if it fits, which as you can see, it doesn't. So I used a file and emery paper to bring down its size so that it fits perfectly. Now I brought in the 10mm white thermocol sheet I will be using and cut it into size equal to that of the 3mm MDF. From that square, I cut rectangles of the same length but width equal to 2.4cm. I cut 6 of them and using glue, I started gluing them on the lines we had drawn earlier. I kept a heavy material above them and let them dry. I brought the enclosure, put the MDF inside of it and marked the spots for DC barrel connector and USB cable. Then using a 5mm drill bit, I drilled the holes. I brought them to shape using a file. Now I glued the corner I had left earlier using wood glue. As I have not hammered the nail, I am using hot glue to hold them tightly in their places while the glue dries. I have completed some remaining connections like adding this wire for data in, adding power wires to the barrel connector which powers our whole circuit, adding the IR receiver and finally hot gluing all of them in place. I have connected wires to the 4 through VCC and ground wires which goes to VIN and ground pin of the Arduino and powers it. I know the wiring looks messy but you can look for pictures of it in the description below which will clear the confusion. I hot glued the barrel connector to its place and the wires coming from it to the MDF. Using a paper for insulation, I hot glued the Arduino to the top of MDF as well. Let's finish the top now as well. I took the thermocol again and started cutting it in sizes equal to the gap between previously fixed thermocols. I only measured one for each row and then cut the remaining required using that piece. If required, you can also use a little amount of glue. After this was done, I measured the box, brought in the acrylic sheet, 
mark the measure dimension using a marker and cut it. I made several cuts using a box cutter and then applied some folds at the corner of a table to cut it. I will use a 2mm bolt for fixing the sheet as I don't have a fitting screw, but you should use a screw. After marking spots for bolts, I drill them using a 2.5mm drill bit. Using some acetone, I removed the marker stains. I made markings on the enclosure where I have to drill and drilled it using a 2mm drill bit. But before screwing, I glued butter paper on it. Then I kept the acrylic sheet and screwed all the bolts in place. As you can see, the sheet is a bit concave at the center. That is because the sheet I used was not completely flat, but I can fix it later. Also, I used my laziness and did not cut the thermocol smooth which can be seen too. So keep these points in mind if you are going to recreate the project. Apart from all this, it is looking awesome. I used an audio splitter. One goes to the speaker and one to our spectrum analyzer and the result is in front of you. It's looking really great and I am really enjoying it. And you can also switch to animation mode just by the click of a button. As you can see, the LEDs are lagging and it's looking much more drastic in the video. It is due to the sketch which is a bit long. So I created a whole new algorithm and it is looking nice now. You can find all the sketches in the description below. Also, I am not applying polish to the enclosure, but you can surely do that if you want. That was all for this video. If you enjoyed watching it and appreciate our effort, please like and share and also consider subscribing as more videos are on their way. Thank you guys for watching, till next time.